Hello, my superstars of Prima 4. It's me again on your screen, Waiso Saddam. I bring you greetings from this side. Are you staying safe? Please, wash your hands always. Do not touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth when your hands are dirty. Now, friends, last time, you know we are still handling vegetation in our district. Last time, we dealt with forests, and now today, we are not going to repeat the same. We are going to handle something new. Guess what? Now, my friends, today we are going to deal with something so interesting. Maybe you have seen it around, but you didn't know that it is. So, by the end of our lesson, or during our lesson, we should be knowing what a swamp is, the importance of swamps, the dangers of swamps, and the ways of how we can protect our swamps. Are we there? And you know we deal in sessions. So, what are we going to have in our session one? Let's watch. Oh, we shall define, we shall know the meaning of a swamp. Friends, it's not a new thing. What's a swamp? Have a simple question for you. Is someone trying it out? Wonderful class. I see very many hands up. You can say it orally. Okay, now we have to confirm. Now, first of all, a swamp has two names, just like you can hear Waiso Saddam. So someone can say a swamp, or you can also say a wetland. It depends on what you want to say. So when someone says a swamp, is actually meaning a wetland. Are we together? So next time, don't be confused when we say a wetland and we say, what's a wetland? No. Friends, we are simply meaning a swamp. So what is a swamp? A swamp actually is a water-logged area with vegetation. This place has water and vegetation grows in it. And that is a swamp. As you can see here, this is how a swamp looks like. As I said earlier, we can say a swamp or a wetland. This is how a swamp looks like. So you can see it has water in it and there is vegetation growing in it. So that is a wetland or a swamp. Have you seen any? By the way, we have one in Kampala here. Have you ever heard of Luigi Swamp? It is just in Kampala. And I know you have seen very many other swamps around your villages or around where you stay. Now I want to tell you good news that we have three types of swamps, or three kinds of swamps. And these swamps are grouped according to what is found in them. Okay? So you can see like this one, I see papyrus. Papyrus. This is what we call papyrus reeds, or papyrus. Now, a, a, a swamp with papyrus is known as papyrus swamp, or papyrus swamps. Are we there? Then we have also a forest that can have trees, many trees in a forest. And that one is the one we shall call forested swamps. And lastly, grassland swamps. So there are the three types of swamps you have. Now in Uganda, we commonly have the papyrus swamps. Are we there? Now, friends, after knowing the meaning of a swamp as a, a waterlogged area with vegetation, we can now go ahead to see what can we find in swamps, okay? And that's what we call resources found in swamps. As you can look at my swamp, I know you can't see it clearly. It's not the real swamp. This is a picture of a swamp, okay? So don't say, eh, but I can't see what is there. But I believe those with good eyes, they can see plants in it. So now we can get papyrus reeds from swamps. So one of the things we can get from swamps is actually papyrus reeds, as you will see here, okay? This is the one I'm talking about, papyrus. We can spell the word papyrus together very fast. P-A-P-Y-R-U-S, papyrus. Are we there? So apart from papyrus, we can also find their fish. And this fish is commonly known as mudfish, okay? 
but not only mud, we can also find there catfish, we can find there lungfish, and so many others. So in swamps, we can find their fish as a resource. When I talk of swamp resources, I mean the things that we can get from swamps and we can use them to meet our needs. Are we there? For example, when you want to test fish, just you get to the fish and you carry out fishing. You get two or three of them, go and prepare them and enjoy. Okay, you meet your need of getting uh, proteins which are in the uh, fish. Are we there? Now we also have sand, then clay soil. We get sand soil fr from swamps and then clay soil. All of these are swamp resources. In other words, you can also call them uh, uh, raw materials got from swamps. The things that we can get from swamps and we use them. Okay? So we have clay. You know where we use clay mainly? I guess you know. We use it when we are modeling, when we are making pots. So we also have sand that is used in building. We have fish. I know you enjoy it. Now someone is saying, I wish I can get one. Yeah, fish, which is edible. Are we there? Then papyrus. This papyrus provides us with papyrus reeds that can be used in searching houses, that can be used in making baskets, in making mats, and so many others. Now, friends, apart from these raw materials that we get from swamps, some people grow some crops in swamps, and we want to know which kind of crops grow well in swamps. Do you know any? Yes, friends, can mention some of those you know. Very good. Now, let's compare with mine. I have, we have the yams. These grow very well in swamps. We have the sugar cane, we have the rice, we also have cabbages, and so many others. This list is endless, but I've picked some of them. So we have the yams grow well in rice, the sugar cane, rice, cabbage, they grow so well in swamps. You know why maize is not here? Maize does not need a lot of water to grow well. But for the case of these crops you see here, they need a lot of water to grow well. Are we there? That's why they are good. They are good when planted or grown in swamps. Are we there? So what is in session number two? We have uses of swamps. Are these swamps useful to people? Are they useful to us? We are yet to know if they are useful to people. Now, friends, I have a simple question for you. How are wetlands of value to people? How do people benefit from wetlands or swamps? How are swamps useful to people? Yes, friends, yes, someone is saying fishing. You are right. Okay, let's see. Now, one. These swamps help to control soil erosion. I have a list. Uh, we can just read through very quickly together. They provide water for domestic use or work. They are fishing grounds. They provide raw materials for crafts, for people who make crafts. Then swamps help in rain formation, and they provide water for irrigation farming. Now we can look at some of them. I have here a swamp. Swamps control soil erosion and floods. Now when it rains heavily, you know floods may occur. So what this swamp does, it is a catchment area for water, for this flowing water. This flowing water will get a place where it collects itself and it does not distract people's, or it does not enter people's homes and gardens. Okay? okay? So this swamp acts as a water reserve. When it rains a lot, this flowing water will have where to collect. Are we there? And that will be in a swamp. So it will not keep floating on top of the ground uh, to enter people's homes. Also, within uh, a swamp, we have vegetation. Remember, the agents of erosion have fast flowing water and strong winds, plus many others. Now, when water flows, the vegetation in it will reduce the speed of flowing water so that it does not wash away the top soil. Are we there? So that's how a swamp controls erosion and then
floods. Uh, we have the second here. Swamps provide raw materials for crafts. When we say raw materials, we mean things that we can use to form others. Are we there? Like you can see my friend is carrying something on the back, and that is papyrus reeds. This one can be used for searching houses. Okay? These are temporary, semi-temporary houses. I mean temporary houses or semi-permanent houses. They are not common in towns, though some of them are around hotels. They are those places that you see, they roofed them by not using either uh, iron sheets and iron sheets and maybe they use papyrus reeds. Are we there to search some of these houses? Now we also use the papyrus reeds to make baskets, baskets and then mats. Are we there? So they are very important to the craft industry. They are used as raw materials to the crafty industries. We use them to make other things, as I've mentioned, like baskets, like mats, and so many others. Then uh, they are fishing grounds. These swamps are fishing grounds. People go and carry out fishing in swamps. And mainly, I told you, the main type of fish caught in swamps is mud fish. Mud fish. Are we there? Then we also uh, saw that these swamps provide water for irrigation farming. Now, people who carry out farming near swamps during dry season, they don't suffer a lot. They don't get the effects of, uh, of too much sunshine. What they do, they just get water from swamps and they water their crops or they irrigate their crops. And that's what, what we say as they provide water for irrigation farming. Also, friends, these swamps help in rain formation. You know, they have water and plants. The water uh, helps when this water is heated. It helps in, in the process known as evaporation. And even the plants help in the process of uh, transpiration. These two processes help in rain formation, as we saw earlier in our previous lessons. Now also, friends, uh, these swamps provide water for domestic work. Like some people fetch water from swamps for washing utensils, washing clothes, and even for bathing. Are we there? So these are the values, functions, importance of swamps. So my friends, we shouldn't destroy swamps. We should preserve and protect them because we have seen their uses. Are we together? Now friends, what do we have in our... Uh, okay, we also have what we call the dangers of swamps. However good they are, but they are also dangerous to people. Now, how are these swamps dangerous to people? Is someone thinking? Can share it with a friend if I tell you have one? How are these swamps dangerous to people? Okay. Now, one. Swamps are bleeding grounds for mosquitoes. Or you can say for vectors. They are bleeding grounds for vectors. They are very, very good places for these mosquitoes or vectors to reproduce. So people who live near these swamps, be, be careful because you have as many mosquito baits as possible. Are we there? So do not live near swamps because they are bleeding places for these vectors or these mosquitoes mainly. That can easily <coughs> that can easily carry the germs, the disease germs that can infect you. Now we also have the harbor. Let's spell the word harbor together. Harbor. H-A-R-B-O-U-R. Uh, -O -O harbor. They harbor dangerous aquatic animals, the lakes of crocodiles, snakes, frogs, and so many. They live or stay in swamps. And some of those animals are harmful to human life like a crocodile. Now, if you are living near swamps, one time you'll go to fetch water, and you never know, you might be attacked by the, some of these animals, and you can easily lose a life or your life. So these swamps are as well dangerous. But we can avoid their dangers, like now we should not stay in swamps. People shouldn't settle around swamps. You have to leave them. 
to preserve them and you live far away from swamps to avoid the effects of these. Also, some, they sometimes flood in case of heavy rainfall. See, these uh, swamps are catchment areas. It's, they are areas where water can collect in. But when it rains heavily, constantly, these swamps can easily overflow. And when they overflow, they will cause floods that can destroy gardens, that can destroy buildings, and many things can even cause, cause death. Are we there? So these are some of the dangers. There are more. You might be having more and have not said your answer, but don't worry. There are many, many, many other. So we can avoid by staying away from swamps. Are we there? We shouldn't stay in swamps or we have to keep a distance from swamps. Now, friends, uh, we have to continue very quickly. What do we have in session three? Okay, we, sh we have the problems faced by swamps. These swamps also have problems. They are like people. They are like you. They have problems. You have problems at home, even when you are going to school, or even when you are at school. So, even swamps have problems they face. Do you know some of them? Okay, let me see if you know some of them. Think of two problems faced by swamps today. Which problems are facing these swamps today? Okay, do you know any? Let's confirm now. Friends, one we have, let's read together, swamp drainage. We have swamp drainage. Let's put the word drainage together. Drainage. D-R-A-I-N-A-G-E. Drainage. Wow. We also have dumping of wastes in swamps. We shall explain these points and then drought. There are many more, but these are the common ones. Swamp drainage, dumping of wastes in swamps, and then drought. Oh, wow. Drought is a common thing in the environment, so we have to be careful. We should, and we know how to avoid it, so we should avoid it. Are we there, friends, my superstars? Now, you can now see here. See some big tractor, okay? Now someone is draining the swamp. Is making sure that he removes this swamp to put there some other thing. So when we talk of swamp drainage, we simply mean the removing or removal of water from swamps for other human activities. Now, many people tend to destroy swamps and they replace them with big arcades, with big schools, with big hospitals. Are we there? Now that practice is known as swamp drainage, the drying up of swamps for other human activities, or the removal of water from swamps for other human activities is what is known as swamp drainage. It is a bad practice, as we shall see, it is very bad to carry out swamp drainage. So that is it, removing of water. Now we also have dumping of wastes. Many people who are living near swamps, they have not, never thought, they have never learned about a dustbin. For them, everything they don't want, they just go and dump. Every waste they go and dump in there. It's not a good thing. We have to, uh, we have to properly dispose our wastes so that they don't have the bad effects on our environment. Are we there? Then this drought reduces the water levels in swamps. Sometimes during the strong sunshine or uh, during long dry seasons, these swamps dry up. And that is a bad thing. That's a problem that these swamps are faced. Now, when I come back to swamp drainage, the drying of swamps for other human activities, the removal of water from swamps for other human activities. Why do you think people do this? Yes? Why do people drain or dry up swamps? Okay, we have very many answers. Now one is to get land for farming. To get land for farming. You know, some people grow crops as we have seen. There are those crops that grow very well in swamps, like rice, yams, sugarcane. So what some people do, they try to drain these swamps 
uh, so as they can plant their crops. Are we there? So one is to create land or to get land for farming. The other reason is to get land for setting up industries. You know, these industries, first of all, they need a lot of water. This water is used for cooling these machines down in industries. Now, what some people do, they go and either destroy swamps, then they establish their industries there, or they keep on draining, getting a lot of water from swamps to be used in their industries. But mostly, they just dry up the swamps, and or part of the swamps, uh, part of the swamp, then they set up their industries, which is a very, very bad practice. We shall see how dangerous is some drainage to the environment. Then, friends, also to create land for settlement. You find where your beautiful house is, there was a swamp. And for you, don't know, try to ask daddy that was he a swamp before. I know they are very honest. They will tell you that it was or it wasn't. Now, friends, some people clear or dry, dry up swamps in order to create land for settlement. Then also to get clay for making bricks and pots. Lastly, to get land for construction of roads. So these are the common reasons to why people drain or dry up swamps. So these are some of the activities that these people do. Okay, After draining swamps, they can have settlement, they can have industries, they can have construction of roads, or farming. Are we there? Or pottery and brick laying. Now, we can also see what are the outcomes. When I say outcomes, I mean effects or results or the dangers of swamp drainage. How is swamp drainage a bad practice? Why shouldn't we do it? Because, my friends, we shouldn't do it. It is very dangerous, as we can see here. One, this, let's first read it through very quickly. It leads to desertification, flooding, drought, shortage of water, and destruction of natural habitats for wild animals. I think we can see one by one. Desertification. This desertification comes from the word desert. So, friends, when we drain swamps, remember these swamps help in rain formation. So when we destroy them, it means that we have reduced on rain formation. What happens is this fertile area, this area was very fertile as you can see. It was very, very fertile as you can see here. This was the swamp. So when we destroy it, it keeps on turning. This was very good fertile land, but it turns, first of all, to infertility, to infertile land. And the amounts of rain will reduce. And this place, that used to be a very good one, it will turn to be a dry place, complete, as you can see in my picture, this and this one. Okay? The place is now a desert. This beautiful Uganda, if we continue destroying swamps, time will come and Uganda is like these countries you have heard of, desert countries. In Africa, the countries like Egypt. So we shall also be like those people. We shall no longer be receiving heavy rainfall as we do. So friends, take care. We shouldn't never allow people to destroy swamps because it can lead to this bad effect. Now, we also have, it causes floods. You know very well these are catchment areas. When it rains heavily, water will collect here in the swamps. When you destroy swamps and it rains heavily, where will this flowing water collect? Into our houses, okay? Into our gardens. So it can lead to floods. Let us not destroy swamps because these swamps will contain this water in them. Now, friends, we can also talk about uh, uh, drought. It leads to drought. When uh, you reduce the rain formation, it means that we shall have reduced amounts of rainfall received, okay? And that is drought. A long period of sunshine. So when it does not rain, it means 
we are experiencing a dry season and it goes beyond a dry season to a prolonged sunshine which, which is drought. It also destroys the habitats, the natural habitats for, for wildlife, for these wild animals. So when we destroy them, we shall be killing uh, these animals and destroying their homes. Where will these animals live? Are you going to share with these animals your beds? Obviously, no. So, friends, we have to be very careful. We shouldn't destroy swamps because it leads to desertification, floods, floods, drought, shortage of water, and destruction of natural habitats, as we have seen. Now, friends, we are about to come to an end. How to protect swamps? By the way, we can protect these swamps. I know most of you were worried. But we, what are we going to do? We can protect these swamps and we enjoy Uganda for many more years to come. Okay? Because I want to see my great-grandchildren enjoying Uganda when it is still with its natural shape. Are we there? Now, what can people do to protect swamps in our communities? One is here. One we have to educate people about the importance of swamps. We have to educate the masses about the importance, the values of swamps. Because some people ignorantly destroy our swamps. So now it's our duty as the government and the citizens of this country to educate Everyone, that please let us not destroy swamps. Let us not settle in the swamps. Let us not do. Uh, let us not do uh, over cultivate in swamps. Are we there? Secondly, we can. Uh, the government should enforce strict laws against swamp drainage. Okay, mostly when I'm watching news, uh, I normally see people who are evicted. And some of you become so sympathetic and you say, now you see these poor people. There are people who settled in swamps. So now we have a body in Uganda called the NEMA, National Environment Management Authority. This NEMA, it moves with police officers. It has police officers that help to enforce. So the government should enforce strict laws against swamp drainage. People who have settled in swamps should be evicted should be taken away, okay? Should be advised to leave swamps. Are we there? Then relocating people who stay in the swamps. Now, I know there are people who claim for us we were born in the swamp here. They were born in that place, which is okay. Now, what can the government do in this case? Some pe these people were born there and they don't have money to buy in other places. So here the government comes in to relocate people who stay in swamps. Government can say, now friends, we have bought for you this place. So come and stay here, leave our swamps. Are we there? Lastly, we can do what we call swamp reclamation. Now I have here swamp reclamation. With the swamp reclamation, uh, it simply means restoring, bringing back. If you have been using a swamp, leave it for as many years as possible to regain its natural uh, uh, form. Are we there? So with the swamp reclamation, it's simply meaning the restoration of swamps. To restore is to bring back. We can spell the word restore, restore, R-E-S-T-O-R-E, -E, restore. So now, reason is why people reclaim, why should we, why should we restore our swamps? One, to protect the environment. Okay? Two, to allow catchment for eroded wa water. Three, to protect people from floods. So we have to reclaim these swamps. Are we there? Also, they are homes of wild animals. Also, swamps attract tourists who bring income. Now, friends, I have a note for you here. Note, let's read together, national Environment Management Authority, NEMA. Okay, friends, uh, I have a note for you here, and it is here. Let's read it together. National Environment Management Authority, that is abbreviated as NEMA, is responsible for protecting swamps in Uganda. That's why you normally see the NEMA people uh, 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 
evicting these who have settled in swamps. So friends, it has been a long lesson, I know, but we have come to an end. So the body that is responsible for protecting these swamps is Nema. Are we there? So my friends, as usual, I have just five, num six numbers for you, and make sure you write them very well. Um, see you in the next lesson. Thanks for being good children. See you next time.